So this is a list of the common issues that might very well come up during the course of the disease. Whoa, holy bejeebers, that's why you're stressed out. Because it does that, they don't have a financial or a healthcare power attorney, and they don't want one, but they need one because they're making really bad decisions and choices, and there's nobody, and they're coming back from the doctor saying, He says I'm fine, and you're going, <laughs> Did you tell him? Oh, yeah. You don't trust them. Not willing to go to the doctor at all. You can look down here, bad mouthing you to other people, making up stories that aren't true, refusing the care that I need, using drugs or alcohol to cope. Very common, common thing, if somebody used drugs or alcohol before, watch, that's a signal often that they're getting stressed out with their brain failure, and they'll start to do it again. And they will claim, I'm just having a little bit. I just had one glass of sherry. You look in the trash, there's three bottles. In the South, women don't talk about it. They just do it. <laughs> Mixing up day and night. They're staying up all night, sleeping during the day, catnapping during the day. Okay. You're also going to find that they can't get going. Apathy is one. They won't follow the treatment plan. Some people sleep a lot rather than not sleep at all. They have a hard time getting up and get going. They can't seem to get the energy up to go do anything. They will also sometimes perseverate. Early on, it could be perseverating on sorting things in the wallet, sorting things in the wallet, sorting things in the wallet, going through the papers, going through the papers, going through the papers, checking the, checking the mail, checking the mail, checking the mail. As the disease moves forward, though, it could be more like, come here, 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 come here. That repetitious phrase, it's called echolalia. I get stuck and I can't stop saying something over and over and over. I've got to go home, I've got to go home, I've got to go home, I've got to go home. Hey, 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 hey. Very irritating if it happens and very distressing, but it's part of a disease process that we need to acknowledge and recognize. We may also have, oh, up there, my favorite, swearing, sex talk, racial slur, and ugly words. Now, I've kept it real light. My grandmother MF'd me. And I did not even know she knew what MF was. I mean, I... and of course, I made the mistake of saying, Grandma, you don't talk like that. And she said, don't you tell me how the hell to talk. And it was like, well, that worked really well. I'm glad I used that technique. But I do want to point out the sex talk and the racial slur. Racial slur is tough. Racial slur is a real challenge as a caregiver because it means often people you have and you're bringing in might actually trigger some of the behavior. But so are ugly words. Hey, you fat one, come here. You're an idiot. Shut up. You're stupid. And this is not the way I would have ever talked. And that's probably the most important thing. This is not me. This is the disease. It's a preserved area of brain function. I'm sorry. Now, and the plus in that same area is music. That's the blessing and the gift. You get the downside, but you get the high side. We also can have paranoid or delusional thinking, seeking people in pe uh, places from the past, shadowing. Oh, shadowing. Hey, Larry, how about you be there and I'll be your shadow? You walk over that way. Hey, where are we going? Wait, don't leave me. Yeah, come on, let's just go. Whoa, come on. Whoa, not so fast. Okay, come on. I'm coming. I'm going to stay right here. That's a nice shirt. I like your hair. That's nice. Yeah, stay right here. Don't leave me now. Where? Oh, look, I like that. That's pretty. There. Where are you going? No, don't wander off on me. Where are we going? I'll be right back. No, I'm going with you. I'm just going to go with you. But you can't go there. Now, there. I can go too. I'm yes, I can. Bathroom. That'll be fine. I'm just going to go with you. Come on. Come on, let's go this way. And it is like Velcro. And here's what's distressing. The place I like to be is a little bit behind you and to the side. Yeah, Yeah, right here on the edge. <laughs> and every now and then I like to touch and mess and get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to we're, follow my we're friend. Gonna, we're going to be right back. Yeah, I'm coming. Right yeah, yeah, no, don't leave me. No, no, and these no, are people who don't want you to step away, move away, go away, and you need to be away from me part of the day. You can't handle me all day. I'll wear you out. And you will turn around at some point and say, go sit down. You're driving me nuts. This is also a problem because he'll go in the bathroom and lock the door. Hey, hey, how much longer are you going to be? Open the door. Now not only are you stressed out, you're constipated. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't like me very much because you're constipated and I'm the of it. And so 
you come out and say, sit down. And I sit down, and two seconds later, <laughs> and if you do go away from me, where have you been? Where have you? Why did you leave me here? Don't leave it. Go away. And this makes it really hard because you do need a team of caregivers and you do need to step away and you're going to have to tolerate coming back and me being mean about it and being ugly to the other person because I just want you because I trust you the best. And it's usually the significant person in that person's life in that moment. And they want to be right there. We'll talk again about why this is so irritating, but it has to do with my position relationship to your vision, your hearing, and your sense of touch. It wears you out because of where I'm at. And I'm choosing where I'm at because of my disease process. I want you slightly in front of me so I can keep an eye on you. Because you're the guide that tells me what and where to go. And that's why I want you there. But it will wear you out. And that's what you have to acknowledge. You're human. You're human. You're going to need breaks from me because you're losing me. This is not the me I used to be. This is a different me. And you can't stand me sometimes because it's not the me I used to be. And it's really hard for you when you've known me. It's much easier when you've never known the person to be that shadow person and put up with it. When you've known him, it's really hard because I'm losing my words, my language, my relationship with you as it used to be. Okay, thanks, sir. Now, I do want to point out the last things down here. We're not going to spend time on it, but I want to point them out. I want to point out the things I put up there that you don't usually see on the behavior list. Number one, complaints of feeling pain and being sick. Honey, I'm sick. I can't. Please, not now. Just let me stay here. I promise I won't get up. I'll just stay right here. Please, not now. Striking out, that's a very common, but the ones that aren't falls and injuries. We're going to talk about why that's so common in the later stages of the disease. It's part of the disease process. People will lose visual depth perception. They will lose fine motor control in their bodies, and they will lose balance and coordination because it's not about memory problems. It's about brain failure, and we keep forgetting it's about brain failure. I'm going to show you pictures. Contractures and immobility. People think people aren't walking people, and that's why they're curling up into a fetal position. That's not it. They're curling up in a fetal position because their brains are dying. And when your brain dies, it leaves all your muscles turned on, and there's no off switch left. And the on switch means all the muscles pull. And the ones that are strongest for most people are the ones that pull in and across and forward and curl you into a fetal position. Not because people want to do that, but because that's what's left of their brain that's still working, is the pull of the muscles. It also means that people are going to have infections and pneumonias because when the brain gets damaged enough, your brain is what tells your body, hey, whoa, hey, infection here, we need to get the T cells active, which is going to get the white cells to go up, which is going to give me a fever. These people in the late diseases state don't get fevers. Their fever, you're lucky if it will go up to 99 degrees because the brain is not telling the body what to do. It's not mounting resistance to an infection. So you will know by behavior before you know by white cell count that somebody has an infection brewing. And you'll go ahead and do that urinary tract thing. You'll do a urinary culture. You'll, you'll get them to do the urinary culture and they'll come back, well, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But you can tell by behavior. They're, they're going, they got it here. Look, they, they, they get it. You get it. Go on out of there. Get out of there. Go on. They get the hell down there. You go to hell. Go to hell. Go on. Go on. They get to hell. Got to get it. Get it. Get out of there. Get it. Get it, get it. Whoa. You're like, whoa, what is with mom? She's seeing things. She's touching things on the floor. She's reaching. She's smacking people. Or she won't get up. It's like, whoa, what is going on? By the time we figure out what it is, it's like, oh yeah, big time urinary tract infection, big upper respiratory infection, pneumonia setting in. Pneumonia is the number one cause of death at the end of this disease. The second most common cause, dehydration. Because by late in the disease, my brain doesn't know it's thirsty. It doesn't realize I'm thirsty, I'm not hungry. So we get to this last one down here, problems with eating and, and drinking. We are more invested in it than they are. Our problem is learning how to let them go in a positive way, not in a negative way, but recognizing it's about us, not about them. We're going to talk more about that because that's real important. It's really important that we get that under our, under our belts and understand it. 